Hello to all physics enthusiasts, as well as experimenters. This is Andrei Shetnikov. We recently made an informative video about the fascinating optics of convex and concave mirrors, and also another video about the intricate process of heat transfer, including radiation. And under these videos, we are constantly being asked, what is the maximum possible temperature that can be achieved by precisely focusing sunlight? And now, we will figure this out. Our first reasoning will be based on the second law of thermodynamics, which in one of its formulations states that heat cannot transfer spontaneously from a colder body to a hotter one. And accordingly, the surface temperature of the sun is approximately 5,770 degrees Celsius. And if we could somehow focus the rays from the sun and heat an object to a higher temperature than the surface temperature of the sun, it would result in heat spontaneously transferring from a colder body to a hotter one, which is impossible. Well, consequently, as a result, we have upper limits. Essentially, we cannot heat anything with sunlight to a temperature higher than the surface temperature of the sun, in fact. To what temperature can we heat an object using sunlight? We had a similar video on this topic called satellite temperature, and I highly recommend you watch it. However, I will slightly modify the reasoning from that video now, actually. First of all, to eliminate thermal conductivity and convection, I will assume that everything takes place in the vacuum of space. And we have a large lens that, in a highly effective and efficient manner, concentrates the sun's rays onto the surface of a small object. And this body itself radiates heat in the form of energy into the vast expanse of space. Moreover, if we have a darkened and blackened side facing the sun, it should not be mirrored so that the heat is completely absorbed, and the side facing away from the sun, then the radiation will be emitted from this body in all directions. In fact, actually, and if the back side is made highly reflective, it will essentially emit almost nothing, and the radiation will then actually go into the front hemisphere, that is the front half of the sphere, towards the sun. Now we will calculate the temperature to which a body can be heated under these conditions. For this, we will look at a solar furnace located in Uzbekistan, near Tashkent. The dimensions of the parabolic mirror of this furnace are approximately 54 by 47 meters, and its focal length is 18 meters. Let's estimate the light power collected by the mirror at its focus. To do this, we multiply the mirror's area of 2,500 square meters by the solar radiation flux, which is approximately 1,000 watts per square meter. We get 2.5 megawatts. This power is concentrated into a spot with a diameter of approximately 40 centimeters, which corresponds to an area of 0.12 square meters, after which it is re-emitted into space. The intensity of radiation from the surface of this spot is approximately about 20 megawatts per square meter. On the other hand, according to Stefan Boltzmann law, this intensity is equal to sigma t to the fourth power. We find temperature at the focus 4,300 K, 4,300 Kelvin. And here, a few comments need to be made. First, according to reference data, the actual power of the solar furnace is not 2.5 MW, but 1 MW, which lowers the temperature of the sample. Moreover, this heated sample emits radiation not only forward, but also backward because it is so extremely intensely hot, which means the surface area of the sample increases, in fact, significantly more, and all of this collectively lowers the temperature. The second comment is that so far, I have been thinking and reasoning more like an engineer who carefully and meticulously and thoroughly aligns all the data, while physicists achieve the same result in a completely different way. And I will now show how... Let's consider a sphere whose radius is equal to the focal length of the lens collecting the sun's rays. If the entire surface of this sphere were blazing like the sun, the temperature of the body inside this sphere would be equal to the temperature of the sun's surface. But the sun's rays come from the direction of the lens. The radiation from the heated body spreads in all directions. Therefore, the temperature of the body must be such that the absorbed and emitted power 
are indeed equal. The power of radiation is proportional to the fourth power of the temperature. Therefore, the fourth powers of the temperatures of the body and the surface of the sun should relate as the area of the lens squared to the area of the sphere 4 pf squared. And from this, we obtain the expression for the temperature of the body. And looking at this particular formula, we see that the temperature of the heated sample is ultimately determined by the ratio of two geometric parameters, specifically the lens radius and its doubled focal length. By the way, these relationships should, in general, apply to the parabolic mirror to the same extent. And then the question arises, why are the mirrors at solar stations made so very large in size, and so large indeed? It seems that with this mirror you can indeed achieve the identical high temperature at its focus if the ratio of its radius to the focal length is essentially the same. In fact, essentially vary. And your thoughts and opinions on this particular matter, why they are made so large, please write in the comments to this video on YouTube. Thank you.